Hello everybody and welcome to the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Pixelogic ZBrush live stream I should say. And welcome, I am Folygon and tonight we're gonna be doing something brand new from scratch. I'll chat for a little bit and give some time for some people to pop in and join us here. But if you have been joining us for the past few weeks, I have been working on this little shark pup here. And the original 2D concept is by Lily BZ. if you guys want to go check out more of her work. But tonight, I figured we should do something new, something completely different. Hence why we have our good friend, the Sphere, here. So, what we will be doing tonight, or actually, I'll, I'll give some time for some people to pop in and then I'll talk more about what we're going to be doing. Uh, again, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Folygon. This is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Hit that follow button down below wherever you're watching. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, wherever. And yeah, uh, a little bit about me. I am a freelance digital sculptor. And if you guys want to find more of my art, I have a browser window open here somewhere. You can check out my art station to see some of the stuff that I have on there. Just Google Folygon and you'll find all, uh, all of my stuff as well as my YouTube channel and whatnot, and my gum road and such. But yeah, so tonight I had an idea. I don't know how it'll go, we'll see. Essentially what I wanna try doing tonight is, and one second here, let me make sure, <laughs> let me make sure that this stream is actually up. Okay, cool, we are good. Just before I start jibber jabbering away. Um, so tonight, my idea was that we could do some concepting from scratch, and essentially get you guys in the chat involved in it. So, to start, we'll start with maybe like a noun or two and then just start throwing in some additional adjectives as we continue going, or we can start with an adjective or whatever. Um, so some kind of person, maybe a place and a thing, and then we can start combining some ideas. So probably not a place, now that I think about it a little bit more, unless the, pl like, unless the place could be something like like Mar, like Martian or creature from space or creature from location, something like that. Uh, but place probably not a, a very good noun to start concepting some kind of character or creature with. So to kind of get the ball rolling, I would like to get the ball rolling. Right, we got our ball right here. Um, I would like to. I don't know. Let, let's let's go along that line. Let's say like creature from space or Martian or something. I really want to spend like just a few minutes doing a bunch of these and probably do that for like the first half hour. We'll see how it goes, see how many suggestions and such that we get. Uh, and then from there, we'll probably pick one of those concepts that we did really rough and quick and then develop on that more for the rest of our time tonight. So we got a couple hours and then Jose is streaming after me. So hopefully, We'll have enough time to create some cool stuff. We'll see how it goes. Um, Davood Wood, welcome to the stream. And Xeon Axelot, robotic arm. Juan Carlos, what's going on? How you guys doing? Welcome everybody else that is joining us. Hope you guys are having a great day. I got my green tea, which means I am ready to stream and I am ready to do some sculpting. As long as I have tea, I can sculpt all day. <laughs> All right, so robotic arm. So robotic, um, maybe robotic Martian. So I was saying like space or or robotic alien. It doesn't have to be a Martian, right? So let's let's stick with robot and alien. If anybody has some other nouns or adjectives we want to throw into the mix, and we don't have to do all of these as one, we can kind of take it piecemeal and see how it goes. I don't know, let's just start doing some stuff. Start inserting some geometry and playing around with some shapes. And we'll try to make some cool stuff, like I said. We'll try to do these relatively quick. We don't have to spend a long time on each one. But yeah, let's just get in here and, I don't know, let's play around. For the alien aesthetic, I don't know, let's try going this way. It's starting to look a little um, orangutan-y right now, but that's okay. Let's try to change some of the planes here. 
Maybe feel a bit more creature or alien, or we could lean into the orangutan mindset a little bit more. Space Gypsy. Space Gypsy. Gypsy is a little bit broad. Oh no, let's see. I need a lower Dynamesh resolution than that though, before we continue on here. What I find um, to be effective for me, at least when I'm trying to like just sketch and doodle some stuff, is to insert uh, a bunch of geometry as quick as I can. So for something like this, maybe some quick spheres for the eyes, maybe some quick squashed geometry for some ears, just some different stuff to start getting the ball kind of rolling here. Like mouth shape, like nothing has to be specific here, right? It's just a matter of kind of playing around with some different forms and trying to find something cool. Let's see, let's grab our standard brush and try to make like a quick eye cavity. We can move this around. Since there are some more people in here, now I'll explain again what we're doing. Essentially, we're just doing or spending the at least, you know, first quarter or half of our stream tonight. <laughs> Wally, <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's he's kind of like a space al a robot alien, more robot, but um, essentially what we're doing, we're just throwing out some nouns and adjectives, trying to quickly concept and cobble together a few different ideas uh, for something, uh, a few things really quick. And then what we'll do is we'll pick one of those and try to develop on it a little bit more as we continue. So let's see, we got our eyes, what I'll do, and I do this a lot when I create my own eyes. I'll just like slice my eye in half with a slice curve brush. And then, let's see, mirror, go over on, whoops. Let me try that again, mirror and weld, there we go. And then, you can scale up our little eyelid here, or you can inflate it, whatever you want to do, to start creating some quick eyelids. Beautiful. And if you center your pivot point around your sphere, you can rotate that concentrically around that shape, which is very nice as well. Without kind of getting too wonky there. Here, I'll turn that off so you can see. So that's rotating perfectly around the middle of that sphere. And we can change the feeling of this character a lot with the eyes and mouth. That's why I try to get that stuff in relatively quick because a lot of the emotion from this stuff, like the, the feeling that we're gonna get from a lot of these characters, comes from the eyes and the mouth. So we can kind of play with those. Maybe this dude gets some you know, downward slant and get a little bit more angry. So we, what did we say? Uh, alien and robotic? So maybe we could get some like tighter edges in some areas, some more organic form in some other areas as well. I don't want to get like super clean with this stuff. I think this is gonna be relatively quick. I mean, this is like maybe the level that I wanna take these to. Maybe we can take like a couple more minutes here and just develop the idea a little bit further. But this is like the extent of what I wanna do. Just something quick and try to get some geometry on there and then make another one. And then after a little bit, we'll come back and pick one and develop on it further. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just say, boom, done. Grab a new sphere and start shaping that up. Or you know what, better yet, let's do this. Let's just merge this down and I'll duplicate it and I'll use this as my starting point for the next one and maybe we can, I, I do this from time to time. Here, we'll just rotate it around and start making something new out of this shape here. And let me mirror and weld that so that's even. Whoops, let me slide that over. Mirror and weld again, there we go. Much, much better. All right, so what do we got? Snack, snack model. I think, maybe snake? I don't know. I think that snack is missing an E on the end. Goes to Christmas future, what's up, dude? Snake, snakeish. Hmm, all right, I'm feeling it. Let's see. Let's try to maybe use some of the stuff that we already got. Let's grab our snack hook brush. Ooh, you know what? I'm kind of kind of liking some of this. 
All right, let's grab the, where was it? Snack hook, as we call it. And just pull out some geometry. Looks more caterpillar than snack. But actually, let's do, hmm, you know what? Instead of that, instead of like pulling out a body, what if it's like a humanoid creature with a snake-like neck? Coming up. Ooh, I'm like in this direction. Kind of neat. All right, keep the Dynamesh resolution really low. Maybe this is like a horn or something in the middle of the head. And let's append some spheres again for the eyes. And you know what? Snakes have their eyes a little bit, snakes and lizards have their eyes a little bit more on the sides of their head, so maybe we can like pull back a little bit more. Let's make this head kind of more of a, like a, a diamond shape, like what we would see with a snake. Ooh, I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing. We're getting some cool stuff in here. Maybe we can like get a cool little plane change going on there. Let's see. And then right here, you can try to sneak in some eyeballs. All right, let's make these a little bit larger. What do we got next up, guys? What's, what, what do we got for the next one? Because this one might almost be done. Uh, what is this for? We're just doing some cool concepts tonight. Spending uh, about a few minutes each on uh, a couple different quick ideas that you guys shout out in chat. And then what we'll do is we'll take one of those and refine it a lot further. So the step one, step uno here, is to just kind of come up with a couple different shapes and play around with the forms and try to create something visually interesting that we can develop on further. And I kind of like this idea here where that mouth sits really low. All right. It's looking a little bird beaky. Bird beaky, that's a very, very technical term. But it's true. It's kind of what it's feeling like a little bit there, but that's okay. Fill in some more of that, and cool. Gorilla, hmm, some kind of gorilla creature, all right. Gonzo Muppet. <laughs> this is very specific. Uh, maybe Puppet, or Gonzo. Gonzo's the bear one, right? Is he the bear, is that correct? All right, so gorilla, something that feels a bit more gorilla ish Let's see. I need to look at a gorilla for five seconds. Because I know they have giant domes going on back here. So let's see. Kind of like a diamondy shaped head. So let's just repurpose this thing. I'll just chop off some garbage. Let's remesh that even lower, and we'll start going towards that diamond gorilla-shaped head, all right? And we don't want to do just a straight-up gorilla. We want to start coming up with something new. So we got the basic kind of diamond-shaped head. Got these larger muzzles on front on the front of their face and I have a rounded brow. I have sculpted a couple gorilla, maybe one or two gorillas in my time. It's been a long while since I've done something like that. Now let's see, let's try to push this a little bit. So we'll take the basic shapes that we got. Does anybody have any further suggestions? Nouns, adjectives, words of encouragement. 
all of the above. Let's see. I'll just do what I've done for every single mouth up to this point. Just something really quick and stupid. <laughs> all right. Uh, you know what? Let me up the Dynamesh res now that we got some of the forms defined a little bit more. Uh, looked like an Egyptian snake, this one here. Kind of like heading in an... an ooh, you know what? The, like, pharaoh crown thing. I like where your head's at. Wasn't even thinking of that direction. But yeah, that's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of concepting, is just to do some quick sketches and get the get the gears turning. A bullfish. Bullfish fish. Do I know what a bullfish is? Sounds like a bunch of bullfish to me. I don't know what a bullfish is. I will have to look that up. Uh, a frog. How did you just delete the section? Uh, I don't know what I did. Maybe this? Boom. Delete. Close it off. Just like that. Top secret. I can't tell you. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you one more time. Yeah. Uh, so hold control and shift to use a selection brush. I'm specifically using the select lasso. I am holding alt as well because I want to remove a section. You can also, you know, highlight a section. And it's not gone right now, it's it's still there, it's just uh, hidden. So I have it hidden right now if you know how to use your selection brushes. Then all you have to do is go into your Tool Geometry Modify Topology palette and click on Delete Hidden. This only works, and then I re from there to close the hole. Uh, this only works, of course, if you have um, no subdivision levels. You have to freeze or delete. You can't really freeze for that. I wouldn't recommend doing it. You're going to slow down a lot of things. I would recommend just deleting subdivs if you do. Uh, but yes, that is how I did that very quickly there. I am not, uh, I'm not, I'm an Akhtar. <laughs> I'm not sure if the stream, uh, the, uh, the, the thing is not updated. My name is Ben, so no worries. Uh, no big deal. Um... Love what you do. Thanks a lot for keep sharing your amazing works. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure if that was meant for Iman or myself, but either way, well, thank you, man. Uh, everybody here that streams on the channel appreciates your kind words. But let's see. So I'm trying to just exaggerate some of the plane changes here. I'm trying to use a pinch brush and just kind of pull in, maybe try to find something cool. Let's insert some like really tiny eyes on this guy. Uh, typically, if you have a big dude with a small face and small facial features, that typically means big and stupid character. So we can maybe lean into that a bit more. Let's see, so we got our eyes. I'll just split those off temporarily while I continue to develop on our Gorilla Man. We got some other suggestions for Bullfish and Frog. So maybe we can look at those here in just a moment. We'll spend a couple more minutes just playing around with some of the forms here. We don't need to spend too much more time on this one, I don't think. Whoops, that's okay. I was just trying to very quickly just pull a cut of Geo Cross there. Sure, looks good. All right. Bullfish and a frog. Let's see. What do we got? What is a bullfish? Do I know what a bullfish is? Is it this? I don't think so. Probably this guy here. That looks like a manatee. I think that's a manatee. Well, I didn't mean to click on that. This guy. So this and maybe a frog. So let's let's kind of stick in the amphibian fish territory for a little bit. Kind of has a similar shape of the head to the snake-like creature that I was doing before. So let's use that as a starting point. And what I'll do is just take all of this, Dynamesh, we'll, whoops, please go all the way down, thank you. And we'll just restart here. So he had this kind of larger ridged section that I saw, and then some eyes kind of hanging out in there. So let's try to make that a little bit more visually interesting. Think about that, and maybe think about 
some froggy, maybe we can get some like frog type features into this as well. Just more amphibian in general. Let's see, let's insert our good friend the sphere yet again. And just figure out placement. And let's look at this guy one more time. So he's got kind of that ridge going back. Kind of like these larger section down here. Whoops. My pen sensitivity is broken on me. One second. There we go. And like these larger, lumpier sections down here. We'll play with that for a little bit. And we'll just make some room for these eyes here. I'll do the same thing that I did to our model earlier, which was creating some eyelids really quick. Let's scale these up. And I don't know. Let's see. He feels a little a little bit more bland, like he just doesn't care what's going on, so we'll kind of keep those nice and flat. And then we'll start to pull out the shape here to start wrapping around and kind of covering that. We're still kind of beaky down here. So let's just round out the form a bit more. And maybe for our mouth this time, we can start going a lot larger. Whoops. Let's see. Let's just follow this line here a little bit more. I'll just kind of play around with this shape. And what I'll actually do is create a quick mask. And then I'll use that to very quickly create some geometry. Oh, that opens up to create like some kind of mouth cavity here. Some kind of large mouth. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're starting to shape this up. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you, no problem, man. I, I believe you're the one who asked about the deleting hidden functionality. Not a problem. It's getting a little high res, a little difficult to control, but I don't know. I say this one's done and let's move on to another. So again, the objective here is to create some stuff really quick and just concept some ideas, come up with you know, a few forms here and there. And then f after we have, I don't know, what do we got? This was our one, two, three, four, fourth one. We can start taking these to a more refined level or take one of them to a more refined level, probably. So let's not dilly dally in specifics and we'll just kind of push and pull and try to make some crazier shapes. I think to make this feel more froggy and amphibian, we probably need to widen out the head as we come back a little bit more and start to get maybe a little bit more volume back here. But other than that, I think it's kind of headed in the, in the right direction for fishy amphibian kind of idea. We don't even have perspective on with these. We're just trying to do them very quick and I find it easier to rotate around and move without perspective on a lot of the time. All right, let me merge all that junk down together. Let's review what we got so far. So we're thinking something like Martian-ish, um, robot-ish, kind of the idea there. Something a little bit kind of like a snaky creature. I don't re remember exactly. Some kind of like gorilla direction or big and stupid character some kind of bullfish, froggy, amphibian kind of idea here. But yeah, let's let's maybe do like one or two more and then start maybe refining one, picking one to, to choose to refine. Let's see, flying, a bird, a butterfly. So, hmm, flying insect maybe, bird, the shape, the overall form of a bird can vary quite a bit. So let's maybe do a specific type of bird. What What's a cool bird? Maybe like a toucan or something like that. A toucan Sam. <laughs> Toucans have really cool large beaks. Oh my gosh, that's disturbing. Um, 
What else? Cool bird. What's a cool bird? A parrot, a, a duck of some kind, a hawk. That's fun. And his eyes are creepy. And this bird is grinding. That's a very cool bird. <laughs> Uh, I kind of like the like ridged section here. Um, that's kind of cool. Some cool shape going on there. So maybe we can head in that direction. In terms of bird or insect, we also have turtle in chat. Let's try, hmm. Okay, how about this? How about this kind of like major shape heading in this direction, but going for more of a kind of like harder shelled feel, uh, shelly feeling. So to do that, again, we'll just dynamesh stupid low. And let's grab our good pal, the snake hook. And start getting that kind of like ridged shape. We'll just go like real big here. Let's just like really push and break some geometry, which is always fun to do. Right, and let's see. So we got kind of this cool kind of curve and then curve back. And let's see, so I'm gonna keep that as like a separate thing. You said, somebody said turtle. So maybe we can start playing around with that. Let's make this a bit thinner. And it's still quite a bit thick. So let me use my pinch brush and just kind of come through here and pinch away. All right. And let's do some eyes on the side of our head as well, just like what we did before. Let's see. Derpy with them up or that far forward. So we'll just move them back a little. Let's just do a quick, some kind of eye cavity. Just let happy little accidents happen. Start creating some interesting shapes. And to start feeling a bit more kind of turtle-ish and rocky, what I'll do is probably use something like my pinch brush. Oops. Start like doing some quick planar stuff in here. And just try to like pinch up some forms. And then a lot of the time to get that kind of Rocky feeling, some trim brushes are really nice. So we probably use something like a trim dynamic brush. We probably don't want to go too far here with like texturing or anything. So we probably just want to, I'll just like sketch in some like clay tubesy stuff real quick. Just to start getting some, whoops, getting some ideas in place. perspective real quick and this shape up here is pretty boring so let's try to like exaggerate some of those forms that we see coming off of there and I don't know we'll use something like the move brush with like accu curve to start spiking some of these up a little bit something like that so we're feeling like a little birdie ish a little headed in turtle direction something like this Something quick. And we'll just kind of do a quick little few strokes here, texture a little bit more. And then I think just to like make this not feel quite so awkward, I'll just like pull out here on some of the form. Start to widen some of that. I don't know, I kind of like the undercut eye look that we're getting there. Kind of interesting, different. Maybe we can play with that a bit more. All 
All right. What else we got? What's next? What's next on the chopping block? Mantis. Ooh, mantises are always cool. Owls are always really fun to create. An owl, I don't know if you guys have ever seen an owl without its feathers, but it's the stuff of nightmare. I actually based a creature that I sculpted on uh, an owl without feathers. This thing right here, it's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> but yes, that's what... Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if this is like a barn owl or what, but whatever, whatever type of owl that is without feathers. Birds without feathers in general are pretty terrifying. <laughs> uh, an owl would be cool. All right, so what do we say? Owl praying mantis. All right, uh, let's see here. Open up a new tab. Praying mantis. All right, so it's got kind of like a diamond shape head. We'll, we'll, we're trying to like stick in just the head region. Owl, let's see. Um, there are a variety of different owls. Let's go with a particular, uh, kind of what the heart shaped one, barn owl. Okay, so that is a barn owl. All right, so barn owl. Specifically just the face, please, if we can get a close-up. <laughs> this is like a snake bar now. It's just like coming forward. That's nice. All right, we'll just keep that. And a praying mantis. All right, very cool. <laughs> uh, if it's not too much to ask, what are the specs of your PC? Uh, yeah, sure, man. Um, off the top of my head, i7 processor, 64 gigs of RAM. That's the important stuff. I think I have a 970, I believe. 970 or 980, GTX 970 or 980. I can't remember off the top of my head though. But yes, mainly just focusing on the processor for a couple operations here in ZBrush. It's not used super often, but every time, uh, I can't show this at the same time, but I have Task Manager open in my other screen. Every time I run Dynamesh, uh, the processor will be used. Every time you Dynamesh, Z-Remesh, use any kind of processing operation, your processor will be used, obviously. Um, but for the most part, you know, just RAM helps you in ZBrush the most, I think. Uh, but yeah, so Praying Mantis Barn Owl. Let's start heading in Barn Owl territory first. Let's just start over. Let's just, here, let's delete all this. We'll just initialize down here. It's way too small. And I want a Q sphere as well. Ooh, get a little bit bigger there. All right, barn owl. Let's see, how big is that other thing? Okay, let me make that a little bit larger. Barn Owl Mantis, what an interesting attemptive combo here. So the Mantis has kind of that diamond shaped head and then the Barn Owl has kind of this like heart shaped face but really the main part of the face, come on move brush, it's kind of like this inward dip here. Honestly the Already the feeling that I'm getting is that character from um, Hollow Knight. This character, this one. So that's that's like the immediate headspace my my brain went to when I started like creating this mantis shape and then starting started pulling in here. So maybe we can lean more in that direction. I don't know. We'll just keep playing with it. Let's throw in a quick sphere or in our eye region. Now, do we want really big eyes or really small eyes? Insect side, you know, obviously really, really large. Owl side, obviously really small. I don't know, maybe we could do like a little in-between. 
me just do a quick, I'll, I'll, let's see, quick inflate here on some larger eyes. Let's go for like some smaller eyes. Let's try, let's try that. We'll see how that goes. All right, so insect side, gonna have some kind of like hard form going on there. Owl side, kind of the softer form. Let's see. We have a couple of different shapes here. We would see. Let's do a quick Dynamesh. And I don't know, do we want to do some kind of like beak or jowls? Let's um like really pull in on the shape of the head a bit more. Start like narrowing that quite a bit. And then I think maybe we can start to make this larger shape our beak. So what I'll do is bring a large mask up through here and I'll do what I did on that last character or not the last one, maybe it was the one before that and I'll turn this larger shape into a kind of beak here. So let's see, let's try to make that a bit more cleaned up and visually interesting. Sure, we've got a jawline here, play with. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're starting to come up with some something interesting. Kind of like the ridge here. It's kind of a cool shape. Maybe we can exaggerate some of that a little bit. Play with that a bit more. All right. Very nice. Now the rest of this up here is pretty undefined, which is fine. Like, I mean, if this is the one that we come back to, we can play with this and define it a bit more, but I don't know, maybe I can just hit this with a quick, quick trim or something like that. Quick trim, quick pinch, just to like give it a little bit more form so it doesn't feel so unfinished. But I mean, that's kind of the point. Leave some room for the imagination and play with it a bit more later. All right, um, what did I say? I said like one or two more. So let me just merge all those pieces of geometry together. And we might do one more, we'll see, we'll see. Man bear pig, nice, nice. Um, holy moly, it's a lot of ram. It is, it is, but uh, it's necessary once you start getting up into like uh, some really large projects with like 100, 300 million polys around there. Uh, the ram really helps a lot. Um, Oh yes, I also have SSDs. I have, I think, five drives in this machine right now. Two, two SSDs and three hard disks. And I have like a bunch of crap in my computer, or in my computer, in my closet. I have a bunch of crap in my computer as well. A bunch of uh, crap in the closet back there, like some other hard drives and some other stuff. I've, uh, I've been building computers for, for a very long time. Uh, the very first computer I ever had, I built with my dad, actually. And I've built every computer I've ever owned since then, minus, you know, like a laptop, which I ended up taking apart and upgrading as well, which is very annoying and difficult if you guys have ever done that. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the first owl that you picked looked really intimidating and interesting. Um, head features like tropical birds have, capybara feathers, and night sparrow, what's going on? All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say that's it on doing new, new concepts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one of these and spend some time developing on it further. So the way that's gonna look is We'll just spend as long as we want on it. We don't have to spend the rest of our time on just one of these. 
we could maybe spend, I don't know, a half hour on three of these, since we have about an hour and a half left. Or we can spend, you know, an hour on one, half hour on another. We'll just see how it goes. You know, we're not, it doesn't have to be super specific. No worries. So again, let's just kind of look through these. I think I have one of these duplicated. I do. So we got three, six of these. Six different quick concepts. So I'm just going to paste these on me canvas. And we'll pick one to develop on further. Kind of play with from there. All right, so there's two. Ooh. Every time I look at this face, I just want to say, ooh, ooh. That's what it makes me feel like. Got a froggy, amphibian, bullfishy type dude here. Get a three quarter shot on you. Whatever the hell this monstrosity is. I think we we're saying tur like turtle, parrot. Trying to come up with some kind of like rocky, bony type thing. And then our last one that we just did, thinking about going in the owl slash mantis direction. All right. So there we go. There's all six of our quick little doodles. And now I say we spend some time developing on one further. So what's it gonna be? We'll go, we'll call this one Alien Boy, S Snake Lad, uh, Monkey Man, Frog Kid, Parrot Monster, and Owl F Guy, Owl Friend, yep. That's what their names are. So which one? Which one are we going to develop on further, guys? We'll, we'll pick one, play with it for a little while, and then go from there. Cast your votes in chat. Remember all the, you have to be very, you have to say the name that I said, or else your vote does not count. That's, that's how this works. <laughs> uh, I missed so much already, uh, but I love what you're doing. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. What's your favorite thing about ZBrush? Hmm. I don't know, just the ability to sculpt so easily and fast. Uh, in terms of like favorite thing, I don't know. Favorite tool? That's even tougher. Um, or more tough. I really like Z Remesher and I like using it with Keep Groups to create some uh, really quick and clean and easy topology. Uh, pretty much sculptural topology, but you can actually get some really good topology out of it if you work with it for a while. Um, we got a vote for the Owl Mantis. All right, so that's one for our last one there. Uh, make some feather creature like Mutant Turtle. Owl, Alfred, so we got Alfred. All right, oh no, that was Second vote by Night Sparrow. Uh, third, top right. So I think you mean, oh, that's his name. Oh, you have to type oh in chat if you want if you want to vote for that one. Uh, Ryan says Al friend all the way. Um, and another one for Al friend. All right, I guess we're going with the Al Mantis route. All right, goodbye, monkey boy and s snake chick and oh and frog kid and other guy <laughs> we will now work on owl mantis so let's start kind of picking and choosing some stuff in this the way this is going to work we'll just start kind of picking out some things that we like about the uh direction and get rid of things that we don't and kind of develop on it further from there so i think we got some cool uh, shape language already kind of happening here. But if this is going to be a beak for our bottom portion of our head, that probably needs to change direction quite a bit earlier. So let me do some quick little cleanup here. Maybe the first thing we'll do is, you know, let's actually let's like stay messy for a little while. We'll stay messy for as long as we can. I think it's better to stay in the mess if we're going to be working with Dynamess. All right, what else do we want to pull in? It doesn't even have to be Barn Owl. It doesn't have to be Owl, it doesn't have to be Bird, it doesn't have to be Mantis. Maybe we can just start throwing some adjectives at the wall. 
or if there's some specific shapes that we like that we're seeing. Let's play around and just start doodling and try to kick this up a little bit here. I think I like the idea of, I really, so one thing that I really try to do when sculpting is take external form and wrap it into internal form. So what I mean by that is if I have an external line of a silhouette uh, or an internal line of a silhouette and I can find a way to continue that into my design, it's typically a very good thing to do. So for instance, I really like, if I can select this thing, I really like the uh, line just kind of flowing up here from the beak and then wrapping around here but it kind of falls flat when it just kind of like wraps up to this shape. That's like a really boring form happening there. So instead what I'll do is kind of continue that shape a little bit more. And we can like maybe pull down on this and then uh, we'll try to make this feel a little bit more integrated here. Let me delete that and We'll just start playing with this shape. Try to come up with something a bit more cool. So I'm thinking we got a lot of sharp shapes going on, so I'm trying to exaggerate some of that a bit more. Let me see. We're a little bit high in the Dynamesh res right now, so it's hard for me to smooth that out. Let me play with fixing that up. We'll lower both of those and continue on. Let's see, I probably won't give this guy a neck or body, but we can maybe just throw in some quick geometry here to represent that. I'd like to spend most of our time here working on our head if we can. All right, so and the question is, is this, is this some kind of like humanoid creature? I think so. Let me go. Maybe this is some kind of alien or something like that. So we can get like a little bit of human anatomy in here. So like the direction and major plane changes of our neck into a quick kind of torso shape here. Slide that up real fast. So typically when I sculpt bodies for human characters that I'm working on, this is pretty much all I do. Just take a couple spheres, block out the shape for the neck, and then block out the major shape for the rib cage. It's really quick and easy to do with spheres. It doesn't take very long at all. You can just kind of chop that. And we probably want to get a little bit more meat where that's transitioning up there into the head. So let's do this. So let's zero mesh this as low as it'll go. I'm gonna open up my door real fast. Getting a little cozy in here. And then what I'll do just so this feels a little bit more like an actual body. Let's kind of block out some quick little shoulders for where that'll sit. All right, so what I wanna do now is start to transition some kind of form into where this will connect into the neck it doesn't really make sense the way it's hooking up right now. Typically for, well, really anything, any kind of geometry that you're gonna combine, you wanna make that feel as integrated as you can. So like if you're adding teeth to a character's mouth, you don't wanna just like put the teeth in the mouth and just, you know, onto a flat plane and like tooth, 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 that feels really weird. 
you want to build up the form of the gum around the tooth and start getting that to feel a bit better. So we want to do the same thing here. We want to kind of take maybe a little chunk of our neck here. I'll take like this top section. And I didn't mean to split that. I meant to delete that. And what I'll do is take that and merge it into my head and dynamesh it in. And then what I can start do uh, start doing is blending this form into my neck a little bit more. Start playing with how that's going to connect up there. And just kind of start sketching it out. We don't have to really um, you know, sink our teeth super deep on this yet. We're kind of still just in the early phases of playing around with some big shapes. So, I don't know, let's see. Let's look at this kind of plane change happening here. I think this is kind of cool but where this kind of starts to break down and feel really weird since we just kind of cut this really quick, this line continuation here feels really awkward to me. So I would like to continue that plane all the way down to the furthest point. And then I want this to get a lot sharper. It's just really rounded and thick and we're still getting this like weird wrap. What instead I want, I'm gonna use my move brush with AccuCurve and start to pull out some like really sharp point. It, it doesn't have to be this long. I mean, we, maybe, maybe we like it, I don't know. Maybe we can make it feel a bit more visually interesting. And we can kind of play around with direction. Honestly, this is starting to, they're starting to feel like a bit like horns in some respects. So it might be cool to kind of take this shape and curl it around like some ram horns or something like that. I'm gonna play with that. Just start rotating and playing around. Use my blur hotkey there. A little bit easier. And yeah, I don't know. Kind of liking that basic idea. I really like like I said, the uh, line that kind of continues up from the mouth here. So if we can get some nice flow happening all the way back to this ridge, I think that starts to feel pretty cool. Then obviously we just need to go through here and start cleaning up our beak shape a little bit more. So maybe we can make this a bit shorter. And let's see, let's remesh this because it's a little too high res, a little hard to manipulate. Babu, what's going on, man? Um, thank you for your YouTube videos, especially the recent two, Form and Proportions. A lot of tutorials out there on software and related techniques, but not enough on art principles. Absolutely, I totally agree. It's actually why I'm making the course that I'm working on. Uh, that's why I love your stuff. Uh, that's why I love your stuff. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate that a lot. Exactly what I need right now to progress further. Bearwolf fish. What's going on? Nice, uh, nice emoticon. I like it. And Lion Biscuits. How you guys doing? Uh, I have the worst time trying to sculpt Aqua from Kingdom Hearts 3. Aqua from Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't think I know who that is. Uh, I'm taking a break now that I remembered you're streaming. Yes, awesome. Well, welcome. Sculpting is very difficult. It's good to take breaks. Remember that. I also take breaks from time to time. <laughs> All right. I don't like the uh, kind of rounded nature. A lot of the shape language that we're, we're like getting into in this is very sharp and angular so i think for the most part i wanna like we do have some rounded stuff going on up here because this wraps around i think that feels really cool but the we definitely have like a lot of these sharp hard angular transitions going on so let's try to like retain some of that stuff a little bit more uh, especially down here where this is like rounding out way too much so let's like pull in here and I don't know let's just like pull that out make sure that's kind of lining up 
a little bit better. So right now it's not lining up very well. Ooh. All right, let's do some larger kind of form changes up here. Start sketching in some more of that neck. There's definitely gonna need to be some more meat on both ends of this guy down here. And let's just kind of fix the plane changes that we have going on with our torso. Kind of liking some of that. really like the major shapes here, so let me fix some of this stuff really quick. I feel like this would be a more lanky character. Let's just, I don't know, let's just get a couple more things in here. Maybe that'll help us come up with some more ideas. Like I said, this is pretty much how I block out all my human characters. Same thing with like really anything. When you're blocking out anything, you just want to focus on the most simple part of whatever you're creating. And in this case, I'm just kind of blocking in the larger shapes with some spheres and going from there. It's not super hard. Like the, the tool set isn't super hard. It's just a matter of figuring out what works best with your workflow and kind of going from there. Practicing it a lot. Let's grab these legs. There's also a lot of fundamental stuff that is very nice to know and pay attention to. So I kind of have a lot of that going on in the back of my head while I'm working. And I know this is way too high poly. I know from experience you know, what I want a lot for like a lankier character, which is what I was just saying when I was thinking for this. Let's just try, oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> Moving some more geometry around. Trying to get a little bit thicker up here in the thigh. Taper down into the knee. Sure. Perfect. And then have a little bit of the opposite effect here where we're tapering down a little bit more thick at the uh, knee and then tapering down into the ankle. I'm going to Z remesh with keep groups on at a very low resolution. And essentially, what that does, it gives me a nice edge loop around here that I can play with. And that's some pretty terrible geometry. But now it's a bit better. And I don't, normally I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't Z remesh twice in a row because it destroys your form. But for something like this, it's totally okay because my form doesn't really matter. But there's a nice, beautiful crash for us. Luckily, we have quick save on the scene, saving our butts, so we won't really lose anything. No big deal. Let's reload that back up and continue coming up with some more cool ideas. David says, how do you add a new mesh to the model? There are a lot of different ways. The way that I'm doing it is by using an insert multi-mesh primitive brush. There's a lot of IMM brushes but that is the one that I am using right now. All right, so we should have a quick save recovered tool. Beautiful. And we didn't lose a single poly. That's what I like to see. Um, is the clay tube brush similar to the clay buildup brush? It is similar, 
but it is not the same. It, the clay buildup will allow you to build up form infinitely, whereas the clay tubes brush will have a set height that you can insert up to. They're a little bit different in that regard. Plus the, at least my version of the clay tubes brush, the clay tubes brush in ZBrush doesn't do this quite as well, but here, I'll show you. This is my clay tubes brush. Uh, do I, this geometry isn't super clean. It, it's actually fine that it, because it's not clean, it'll make the demonstration better. So here's my clay tubes brush. Just look at the stroke there. And then here's the clay tubes brush default in ZBrush. Um, so my stroke's a little bit more clean. And the faster you stroke with the clay tubes, the more stair steppy it gets. And I don't really like that. Uh, and then compare that to the clay buildup brush. Like I said, you can just sit here and build that up infinitely, which I do not like that feature. So I have my own version of the clay tubes brush, a little bit cleaner. I don't know. There's a few different things that I have on there. But yeah, I say play around with your own stuff and try to figure out what you like before you, you know, set in stone a specific brush that you want to play with for a long time. I, I recommend playing with all of them. And then after you kind of find what you like, add some customization. But yeah, if you guys are interested in my brushes specifically, they're of course available on my Gumroad as well. I have a bunch of stuff over there for those who have never checked it out. It's gumroad.com slash Folygon. Clean that up a bit more here. This rib cage is like super long, but it's kind of weird and I like it. So we'll just like keep that awkward shape in and what we'll do is we'll like plane out this transition it feels very weird i like i'm liking the very weird i'm really liking the um the like awkward curve we kind of get in there and if we can exaggerate that even more i think that would be cool Whoops. And because we're not trying to be super specific with this stuff, really the only reason I kept those separated was so that I could start, you know, just blocking out those shapes. But we're fine with just like dynameshing these together. We really don't want to get attached to anything that we're creating at this point. It's a pretty bad idea. Mostly we're just like experimenting with form and trying to create something cool. Like for instance, down here, we can just very quickly, whoops. Pull out some quick toes. Try to create a basic foot shape. Let's uh, lower our resolution now. Do like a 1K remesh for this entire thing. Uh, legs are my kryptonite. Yeah, legs are, you know, uh, everything. Everything's tough. Really, it's just, you know, take some time to really look at some reference and play around with your form. Like I said, don't get attached to anything in those early stages. Really, it's just about experimenting and playing around with some different shapes. I think it's cool how that like kind of flows into the foot right now. I kind of like the flowy nature of a lot of the, the shapes in the body that we have right now. And I don't know, maybe we could exaggerate those further by like pinching and like flowing some of these lines together all the way down here. And that's not exactly accurate to anatomy, but that's okay. Fun to get a little representative of form here and there. All right. 
right. Let's add in some arms. I'm thinking something really long and kind of creepy. I feel like longer arms on this guy would do him justice. Whoops. Come on. There we go. I'm trying to grab my insert sphere. Um, Lion Biscuits, you have some of my Gumroad Tuts. Awesome, well thank you man. Having some difficulty with poly painting, are you able to apply paint to individual poly groups or does it have to be an individual subtool? Yeah, you're absolutely able to apply poly paint to individual poly groups. So for example, here I have two separate pieces of geometry and they are in a separate subtool. And what I'll do is I'll grab my standard brush and select MRGB, and I'll turn off Z add. And then I'll switch to just a paint material or whatever we have here. I'll add some subdivs just to make the paint more obvious, and I'll click on fill object. So now that is white, and if I swap my color to black here, I can start painting on this. All right, so now we're kind of painting on our mesh. Awesome, it's not very appealing though, <laughs> uh, but that's not the point. So let me, uh, get our subdivs back here and what I'll do here is create a quick poly group so I'm masking half of that shape pressing control W and now I have two poly groups so there are multiple ways that you can add poly paint to these individual poly groups uh, I'll show you a couple quick ways let's grab a red here or here uh, yeah we'll do a reddish pink I'll apply that and then I'll grab a green and I'll just control shift click this bottom poly group and then I'll click on fill object and now I have that filled in for those two different poly groups let's grab this pink one but instead what I'll do is activate my transpose tool or 3d gizmo and just control click on this and what it does by control clicking on a poly group it'll unmask it for you and mask everything that's not that poly group and then you can here we'll grab a new color grab a quick blue and click on fill object and then we can fill that in for that poly group. So that's how you do that really quick. Hopefully that was helpful for you. And again, thank you for grabbing some of those courses. I hope that they continue to be helpful for you, man. Smooth, 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 smooth. That's right. Played with some of the settings on the brushes. How can I save those settings so every time I open ZBrush, I get those brushes? And easy enough, click on your brush menu here and just click on save as, save that brush out. And what you have to do is install that brush into your ZBrush folder. Uh, and that folder is your ZBrush installation folder, Z startup, that's a specific folder. And then in Z startup, there's another folder called brushes. That's where you wanna put it. Um, thank you, that was super helpful. Absolutely, man, my pleasure. Uh, so does that work for your B standard brush or for some reason it was just adding more clay instead of painting while I was doing it? I'll try again. Thank you. I must have missed that step in the process. Yes, the, uh, the step that you missed, um, Lion Biscuits, is coming up here and see all these different settings for your brush. If you hold the space bar, they're here as well. What, you, what these settings are, Z add, that means that it's adding depth, or I'm sorry, adding form or quote adding clay you could say. Z sub is subtracting clay. Holding the alt key actually swaps those interactions. I just turn that off completely while I'm poly painting and turn on RGB. So that means you're painting now, your brush is in paint mode or MRGB, which means your brush is in material and paint mode. So material, paint, material and paint. So again, RGB, there's some blue, here's some red. And now I'm painting with that brush and I can sculpt and paint with that brush as well at the same time. Just turn depends on what settings you turn on up there. Whoop. We'll undo all the way back. All right, so we got our lanky arms. Beautiful. These are not nearly creepy enough. So let's see. Make them a little wavy tentacly for now. That's fine. It's just easier that way, right? Get those 
ZBrush surfaces. It's always easier. Let's do some move with back face masking. And I don't know, we'll just kind of push and pull the clay around down there. I think your arms are much too thick, lad. So let's play around with that. All right, so we got some weird lanky shapes going on here that are starting to shape up into something. So from here, I don't know, we can work on our face a little bit more. Might have a couple more questions here. Uh, that's what it was, thanks dude. Saved me a lot of frustration. Absolutely, man, my pleasure. Uh, is it useful to use other software for UVs? I would like to know if this is a good idea to do UVs in ZBrush or not. Um, if you want a very specific seam line for your UVs, I would say probably do it in other software would be my recommendation. But there was announced not too long ago a new UVing tool coming to ZBrush very soon. So that might be on the horizon very soon. And I would say once that tool comes out, it looks really awesome. If you have not heard or seen of it, just look up um, ZBrush. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. The UV Master is the, the plugin that's already in here. Does anybody remember what it's called off the top of their head? Who knows what I'm talking about? I can't remember. But you might be able to find it on like the last announcement for um, the ZBrush Summit. It's probably like in that playlist on YouTube or something. All right, this guy was not lanky enough. And I don't know, I think he needs to be a little bit more curvy. A little bit more creepy. What next? What next? We got some more adjectives. We haven't gotten an adjective in a while. Maybe I do want to go a little bit on the skinnier side with the neck now into this weird shape that we've started to build. Kind of feel it like fits the, uh, the weird build that we're going for here. I say we get bigger, bigger and badder with some of these shapes. Whoop, no. I like the upturn and then pull down. And I also like the idea of curving and wrapping these around a bit more. I think that would be cool. So let's remesh this. And yeah, I don't know, I'll just do like a quick 1k remesh maybe maybe lower i don't know we'll see peel uv yes go into youtube and type in zbrush peel uv and you'll see the new tool again that's probably coming out uh like in the next version of zbrush uh they did they did show that at zbrush summit yes that's what i was talking about is there a way of adding a material to a texture map like the way you would save poly paint to export not sure what you mean by adding material to, to a texture map. Uh, if there's a specific map, like, like for a texture, you're typically just looking at color data. But there are different types of material maps that you can export. So like metalness, etc. Different, a lot of different things for BPR rendering. It's a variety. So I don't, I don't know exactly what you're looking for there. Let's inflate this maybe. I, I want these to be even, oh no, that was bad. I want these to be even larger, bigger, badder, better. Ooh, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. And I 
I want to like spiral these a bit more. Oh, it's kind of feeling cool. Yeah, I kind of like the overall heart shape of the that the horns give us to keep a little bit of that um, owly feeling a little bit in there from before. We got the beak and everything, but I don't know, I think getting a little bit of that in there as well starts to feel pretty cool. Uh, in terms of kind of like the area around our eyes, let's like work on this area a little bit more. I'm going to create some quick eyelids. Should probably work on that eye cavity a little bit more as well. Pretty undefined. Need to turn on my Z add again so that I can actually work on my eye. Uh, let's see. Excited for the real perspective in ZBrush coming soon. As am I. I think there'll be some cool stuff that you can do with it for sure. Uh, I haven't seen you make an eyelid like that before. That was quick. Uh, yeah, there's so many different ways to create everything in ZBrush. <laughs> I literally just sliced the eye in half and made like a quick top lid. So it's just a half sphere. That's literally all it is. So nothing super complicated. Really, what I try to, when I'm teaching any kind of sculpting stuff, I really want to try to get people in the mindset of not having super specific methods for creating stuff because I think it I think it's bad to do that in a lot of ways because you get into kind of like a oh this is how I've always done it kind of mindset and that's typically a bad mindset to be in a lot of the time so what I try to do is get people thinking in the mindset more so of, more so of here is the tool set that I have. I, I have like all these tools at my disposal. Now, how can I make it like this time specifically? And maybe you can experiment and try new stuff and just work with your tool set. So like, I don't know, this time I just sliced a sphere in half really quick and you know, that's really quick and easy to do. And it, you know, creates a, not really an eyelid. Stop thinking of things as like, how do I, how do create eyes? This is like A, B, C, D, E. It's just like, I don't know, let's just cut a sphere in half, right? <laughs> and just go crazy. Doesn't take too long. Like I said, very, very simple and easy to do. I prefer that mindset a lot more over, you know, here's how I make a head every time. Because I don't, I don't make a head or anything that I sculpt the same every time. I'm always trying new stuff and experimenting. It's more about just like understanding the fundamentals and your tool set, like I said, and using those as much as you can. Hence why I'm making a course specifically on fundamentals and mastering form. And I keep getting questions about that. So I guess now is a good time as any. I'll be announcing some more info on that course at the end of this month, at the end of February. End of February, beginning of March. I'll be announcing some info about when that will be starting up. I am very excited about that. As I know, a bunch of you are as well, and some of the people that come and hang out on my YouTube and Twitch channel. So more info on the horizon, coming very soon. Polly Swoop, what's up, man? Welcome. Uh, the last ZBrush came out 10 months ago. 
Feels like, uh, it feels like a lot longer than that to me. Um, two more months and the new one will arrive, perhaps? Uh, it doesn't really work like that. It's not on a specific, you know, date each year. It's more of like when the tools are, are done. And I do not have information on the, the like release date or anything. And even if I did, I probably couldn't tell you guys. <laughs> I don't think I would be the person announcing that. Uh, thanks for the creative wisdom. They're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Of course, man. It's starting to feel more feminine to me. I wonder if we can exaggerate that since we're getting so, so curvy. It's starting to feel, hmm, just kind of playing around with some of the shapes here a little bit more. Almost, almost getting a little snake-like. Hmm. I don't know if I like that curve or not. We'll keep it for a little bit. Let's just see what else we can do here. I'm gonna duplicate that little lid that I shoved in there and like wrap this around and make a new one. And I don't know, the shape's not really working yet. So let's play with it a little bit more. Try to create something a little bit more visually interesting. Let's actually grab um, the eye here, like everything in there, and uh, play with scale a little bit. store to somewhere else like art station market or flip normals uh, I'm not I was not planning on moving my marketplace no stand on the Gumby for now not folly <laughs> No worries, man. I understood what you meant. I have a simple question. How do you make holes in a shape? Every time I tried to make one, it is erased when I use Dynamesh or Ziri Mesher tools. There are many ways to make holes in geometry. Many, many different ways. I can show you one of those ways. Since you mentioned using Dynamesh, we'll look at that way. Uh, here I have my body of geometry. I'm going to Dynamesh it. And then what I'm going to do is use my Insert Multi Mesh Primitive Brush. You don't have to use this brush. Essentially, here, let's, uh, I'll insert a cylinder, okay? We'll just insert a cylinder. I'm showing you this method since you mentioned you were using Dynamesh. Let's push that cylinder all the way through the body. And you know what? Uh, let's, let's just like make this a separate subtool. So if you have one piece of geometry, what I recommend you do is look up how to use Booleans somewhere online. I have uh, some tutorials on my, my YouTube channel, as well as my Gumroad. If you go to gumroad.com slash Folygon, my How To ZBrush and Absolute Beginner's Guide course goes through all of this stuff. So if you're interested in learning more and you know learning how to cut holes into stuff is kind of one of those earlier tools to learn, so that's why I mention it. But essentially the way we're gonna do this is I have a cylinder poking through, I have my cylinder set to negative, I have this mesh set to positive, and then I'm going to merge them down onto one another. 
And then all you have to do is redynamesh your geometry, and just like that, you have a hole cut through your geometry. Easy enough. But yep, that's how you do it. And lots of different ways to go about that. Oh no, we turned on all of our grody sketches from earlier. Well, here we go. We're, we're back to our very, very sexy beak. This is, look how, look how sexy that beak is. <laughs> Let's um, let's play with this a little bit more. From the profile, if we're just looking at the silhouette, I feel like we get a little flat up here, and I don't really think it fits with the rest of the shape in the head. So what I would like to do is try to round that out more than what we have right now. So I'll just kind of mask that off and use my move brush to try rounding that shape so that we can continue that curve all the way through there. I think that feels a bit better. If I do say so myself, which I do. And then back here, whoa, <laughs> not what I wanted. I think we could probably, I think the flow of the neck into the horns feels really um, awkward and kind of like stuck on. So to make this feel more integrated, remember that's like one of our key words that we're looking at. Let's take our horns and chop them off. So I'll do this. So I've split them off as a separate mesh and hopefully good enough resolution here with our DynaMesh. Oh, that was weird. I'm just gonna mask that expand my mask a little bit, and then scale this up. So I want to start getting like a slotted in kind of feeling here, right around there into the head. So I think that's starting to feel a bit better. And then down here where our neck is, let's just like split this off really quick and make sure that the form turn kind of like ends before the neck starts like really turning into that shape because that I think is where that problem lies. It's starting to feel like it's connecting up into the horns like it's a part of it. Close those dang holes. Come on. There we go. Somebody was complaining about do you measure closing holes and I can't get it to do it. <laughs> but I figured it out. And then obviously for this part, you know, we need to round this back out because it's just a flat cut where we did that mark before. So that plus maybe we can open up our mouth and work on the shape of our beak a bit more. I don't know, we can work on like larger shapes if we don't wanna continue doing that. I think we're starting to get somewhere, come up with some cool ideas for just experimenting really quick from a sketch that we did that started out as a quick few minute thing at about this level. But let's see how much time we got here. We got about another half hour, so we could continue to develop on this idea for another half hour, just kind of playing around and answering some questions as we go or we could spend that last half hour developing on one of the other quick sketches that we did. So I am fine with either. We got snake-ish creature. We got alien thing, oh, which was his name. That's a very, it's a great name, thank you. Thank you for saying so. Uh, this is our bullfish kind of froggy type creature. He's kind of cool, kind of like in that direction. Then some kind of like weird turtle parrot mishmash. And then this was the, the last one that we did that we ended up taking a little bit further. So I don't know, I'm, I'm cool with either, like I said. We can continue sketching with this or go crazy on another one. The Babu heading out, no worries man. I will catch you next time. Booleans, that's right, booleans are great. Uh, show some more ways, please, for cutting holes in geometry, I assume is what you mean. There are a lot. <laughs>
And now you can die in peace. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, what's going on, Undead Chillin? Welcome. How many years of experience do you have? Uh, I say this every time I get asked that question, just so for people that don't understand, uh, it's a bad question. Uh, I think it's bad to ask people how many years of experience you have, because years of experience doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, somebody who's running every day for 10 years, that's a, they're probably pretty good at running. But someone who's been running for 10 years and they run once a week, they're probably not going to be quite as experienced, right? So I think measuring stuff, of measuring experience in terms of years specifically is probably a pretty bad way to gauge that. When it comes to closing holes, uh, do you typically go for Dynamesh uh, under your pop-up UI? First, or the close holes button under your pop-up. Um, my for my pop-up menu, I don't have Dynamesh in here. Um, I click on I might click on delete hidden. I'm I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Uh, continue sketching. So continue doodling on this this creature here. I'm cool with that. I think that's fine. Like I said. My time is yours tonight, so we can hang out and ask, answer questions. I can ask questions too. How's everybody doing? Anybody working on anything cool? Anything fun going on? I feel like the real question is, how lanky can we get here? before we start getting too lanky. That's, these are the questions that keep me up at night. Let's see. Let's get a little bit crazier here in our shapes. Try to push our form a little bit more until it starts breaking. And then we'll take it back a notch. depth of field just fake and post <laughs> it's one way to do it well one more thing is it possible to use a picture as a reference tool that can be zoomed in when we zoom our model I tried to use an image plane but it can't be zoomed in with my character yeah technically uh, what you could do is set up just a plane of geometry and then just project that texture onto the plane that's one way that you could do that. Uh, typically what I use is just the um, uh, texture spotlight tool. I use that for a lot of different stuff. I love the spotlight tool. It's awesome. I've been using it for a long time for, for reference images. Plus you can actually use the spotlight tool for projecting textures. So if you have like a plane that you want to project a specific texture onto, you can use it for that as well. So. If you don't know how to use the spotlight tool, just give it a quick goob. Maybe you'll find my YouTube channel, because I know I have some tutorials on that. All right, let's keep going here. Typically, if I'm doing some kind of like humanoid form, I like to bring a line down the torso. 
on the back, and I'll do this on the uh, front as well, of the chest. Wow, that's getting really stretched. Let's do a quick dynamesh here. Wow, that is really high res, isn't it? Let's try lowering the res a little bit. Half a million, that's fine. And we'll just try to exaggerate some of the forms that we got here. That are kind of interesting. Cylinder breasts, our favorite kind. Everybody loves cylinder boobs, right? Just starting to sketch a little bit more on the body since we played with the silhouette a little bit. It's just nice to kind of like get in there and play a little bit more. And just start playing with some shapes. Really we're just trying to sketch and come up with some more ideas of the direction we would like to take this. A little flat. And the torso chest here is just like a little misshape in here. So if we can like square out some of that, that would be nice. Maybe get a little bit of a better connection up here for our arms. That's looking pretty gross. Feeling like a little duck billy up here, aren't we? The more I look at this. Uh, let's see. People usually just want to know how long it took you to get to where you are from, uh, to get to where you started to where you are now when they ask. Yes, and I think that is still a bad measurement of, of time. Um, I've said many times before, but I've been... I have never done I'd never done anything artistic before I started using uh, ZBrush and like getting into digital sculpting. I started using ZBrush and digital sculpting about five years ago, uh, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Like, you, like you just answered the question yourself there and said exactly what I said. You just said that people just want to know how long it took you to like get to where you are now. That's a terrible measurement of time, though. The, a real good measurement of time would be me saying. Uh, I used it every single, I used ZBrush like every day. So the first year I used ZBrush, I used it maybe like an hour to two hours, like every few days. Then after that, I really started getting serious and started sculpting for like six to eight hours every day. And I've done that ever since. So that's a better measurement of time for how long I've been sculpting. Like I said, years are a really bad indicator of, you know, how much work it takes for somebody to do something. I got my first full-time job working as a digital sculptor from nothing to, uh, like, having that full-time job in a little under two years. So, if that's any indicator of, for those who have been sculpting for a while and, like, just how much work it takes and how much time you have to put in, I think people will understand. But yes, years, bad measurement of time. I still stand by that. And I will continue to say that. Uh, let's see. Is this character for a game? 
No, it is not. No, this character is not for a game. This character is for playing around with concepting. So we've just like played around with concepting some different shape language. And more recently, I've started breaking our silhouette even more just to like, well, break it. <laughs> break it and see what kind of fun things we can do. So I don't know. I'm kind of liking the direction. I think I could maybe push some form even further in something like the arms, maybe. Kind of like counter that curve a little bit. Something like that. And there's a lot of like weird hard edges going on here in our arms, which I'm not a huge fan of. Ooh, but I'm liking, liking kind of that shape up there. Countering that curve, so that's kind of cool. You can round that trap-ish shape out a bit more and just like kind of flatten this. What's awesome about concepting stuff is that you can have a pretty rudimentary understanding of anatomy for a lot of different stuff and just making good shapes and get pretty far uh, just by like kind of playing around in the mud for a while and then just having happy accidents carry you through a little bit more. So like I know uh, a decent amount about like arm anatomy and we're not really in that realm at all right now. Uh, but there are some some anatomical, small anatomical truths of form happening around here for like where some of the hits and breaks are occurring. So that's kind of the stuff that I find really fun when doing concepting like this. Just kind of like, like I said, playing around in the mud, trying to find some cool shapes and then using either the anatomy knowledge that you already have or looking at some reference images and trying to come up with some cool form that way, which I think is probably the better way to go about stuff like this because using reference is always a great idea. I'm starting to feel a little bit more visually interesting for our arms, uh, our super lanky arms. I don't know, now I kind of like want to redo a lot of the stuff up here in the head. I think, um, hmm, I don't know, can we go, can we get away from the beak? I think I would like to get away from the beak, and instead of doing a beak, still retain this major shape for our head, because I think it is a really cool shape, but I think the idea of a beak just proportionally and w how this is set up right now feels very awkward. I don't think it works really well. So what I instead would like to do is just merge all this together. It's never too late to like change what you're working on. Remember that that's like the entire point of this, not to get attached to anything. You don't wanna like feel like what you're creating is already set in stone. That's the whole objective with concepting, right? Come up with a bunch of new ideas. So instead, I'm gonna play around here and maybe try to get these eyes facing a bit more forward from the side there. Because I much prefer, I think, these just facing forward, being a little bit more humanoid. I mean, this character is going to be more of a predator, so eyes facing forward, right? It's the basic rule. And our eyeball's a little small compared to some of those eyelids in there. Let's merge those rough eyelids down into our head. I think this feels a lot cooler to me. Feels more in line with the type of character that we're trying to build. And there we go. Just a quick merge down with our eyelids that we can start shaping up and playing with a bit more. Awesome. Well, I think I like that, like I said, quite a bit more. And this shape here is starting to feel pretty neat. If 
we can maybe figure out where mouth can go. That'd be awesome. Hmm. There we go. Perfect, right? <laughs> so let's do, um, you know what we were doing before wasn't really too terrible of a strategy, but I think the jawline of this needs to come back quite a bit further if we're going to have some kind of mouth shape here. There needs to be actual room for that mouth to exist. And right now that's just not the case. Can't have that like taper back that far. It feels super, super awkward. Let me just plane some of that back out. And just widen some of this. I think we're starting to get some pretty cool shapes there. And then, you know, for creating mouths, there's a ton of different ways to go about doing something like that. I like kind of splitting my mouth off typically, but that doesn't always have to be the case. Hmm, I kind of like that flatter look there. I think this is kind of starting to actually shape up into something cool. Let's see, let's just do a quick, like I did before, little cut for our mouth. And use our masking tools to open it up and create a little bit of a mouth bag. I like to have mouth bags with my characters because it makes it a little bit easier to work on the lips. Whoops. Let's get in there and carve in a bit more. Them thighs though, all right? <laughs> Thick thighs save lives. So I've heard. Literally just um, pulled that out with the move brush really quick. This kind of feels, um, the shape up here feels a bit like an older character, so instead of going that route, let's start to like sharpen it. Because a lot of what we've been doing is a lot of these like sharper shapes. And I think that feels more visually interesting to me and like in theme with what we've already created so much of. So in creating mouths, it's really important that, you know, when you're blocking that shape out, you just kind of focus on the main shapes. I don't really know what I want to do here for the lips yet. If I want to like go more human, but either way, we still want to be thinking about how this is affecting the volumes around it. Remember that word integrated from before? That's kind of what we want to think of when we start doing all this stuff, integrating our, our forms together. So anything around there is probably going to be fading into that shape a bit more. Just kind of use my pinch brush right now. And I might try. Might try just closing this up really fast. The problem is though, I'll probably dynamesh this again. So it's not a super great idea to close this up, but it is helping me kind of just figure out the shape a bit more. So we'll mess with that a bit more. We're Getting, uh, getting down on time here. I think we've created some pretty cool shapes during our time today, like I was showing off before. These just started off as like quick few minute sketches. And then we took our last one that we did and spent some time refining it. And I'm glad that we created the body. I think this is a lot cooler for that instead of just going through and doing the um, just the head. So cool, cool, cool. Let's make sure we get any last minute questions here before our time is done today. And yeah, we'll just kind of noodle a little bit more, I think. Sculpt an alien butt real quick. Who doesn't love alien butts? Who doesn't love butts? Even, even aliens love them. The sculptor's 
favorite thing to make, right? And we'll spend all of 30 seconds doing it. Well, maybe a little longer. See if I can pull that down, round it out a bit more. If you're gonna have big legs, you gotta have a big butt to support it. Same is true the opposite way. If you're gonna have a big butt, you need to have large legs to support that shape. Oftentimes I'll see characters with that people make and they have these huge butts and like really skinny thin legs that just like don't make sense for the shape and it just feels really really awkward it's like I know what you were focusing on weirdo all right we'll just kind of pinch that up a tiny bit and just kind of like blend up through here for the pillars of the back Sure, that's all fine and dandy. I think that'll do us good. Cool, cool, cool. So a quick little butt on some giant legs. Not really a little butt, but but you get the picture. Armpits are always tough. They always get really messy, and I typically try to keep the arms separated specifically for this reason, but. Sometimes it's a lot easier to work on them if you work on the negative part of your mesh. So I'm just like working on the inside portion there, allowing me to get up in there and really add some more volume in that area. Or I guess negative volume, I should say, lack of volume. I'm trying to just like get that up there more. It's kind of stuck and connected in there, which is always really frustrating to work with. But cool, 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 guys. Uh, let's see, I have trouble creating hard surfaces like armor, dynamesh, or subdivision levels. Uh, what I recommend for you is go on over to youtube.com slash polygon and go into my videos. I have, oh man, I recommended this to somebody not too long ago. We've uploaded quite a few things since then. I have just the video for you. Where is it? I'm sorry, I can't find it. There it is. Hard surface tutorial. Some people to pop. So, here, we'll share, get the fresh link so it's not starting at a specific timestamp, and I will paste that in chat for you. So, this is a hard surface tutorial. I believe there is a link. Uh, I, didn't, I do not have the link to the other video, but I have a shorter video that kind of talks about that. I'm sure you can find it on my YouTube channel with taking longer than 30 seconds to search than what I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, give that video a look. There's a ton of stuff in there that'll help you out. I think it's like an hour or two long, maybe three, um, going into uh, the creation of a clock. And a lot of that stuff is gonna help you out when you go to uh, create some armor as well. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I posed my character with T-pose. It, it always needs a second sculpt pass to the pose. Is there a way to have multiple poses in layers or something? So in the end, I have my regular T pose and then three poses with the polished sculpt for each pose in a layer. Uh, so if you're going to just be sculpting a character posed, uh, you just wanna go like straight through, T pose it out and do that. If you're going to have multiple poses for a character, you might wanna consider getting your topology into a place where it's more uh, ready for animation and then create a rig for your character. But in terms of like creating layers for posing, that's probably gonna be a lot more work once you start getting up into like three or so, three or more poses. For like two poses, maybe maybe not. I would probably like still just sculpt them out real quick. But for, um, for like multiple poses, yes. I think you should definitely go probably like the, the rigging route. But yeah, that'd be my, my advice. And let's see. What are the main sculpting brushes you flip through during your process? Asks Jim. Jim, I have a uh, just just a few brushes really that I mainly use. Uh, they're all versions of brushes that existed in ZBrush, exist in ZBrush right now, or at one point existed in ZBrush. Um, and 
they're they're heavily modified. I was showing off my my clay tubes brush that I use a while ago. It's a lot smoother stroke compared to what you get from the default clay tubes brush. But if you want to get started in that direction, you can grab my brushes off of my Gumroad. Or what I would recommend is start just playing around with these first five or so brushes that you see down here. Those are for the most part what I use uh, to create everything that I make. And then a few, like a few extra brushes here and there. And they're all down here in my custom UI. You can read those, which I believe you can. My tea is all gone. And now it's actually, there's like a little bit left, but I know it's gonna be cold and gross. I'm gonna drink it anyway, because my throat hurts. Ah, still good, still good. I was wrong. Uh, thank you, we'll sub now. Awesome, appreciate it, man. Uh, like big butts and I cannot lie. That's right. I don't think that's how you spell that word, but more power to you. Uh, we'll watch tomorrow. Awesome, awesome. And no problem, Doom. Happy to help, man. All right, cool guys. Well, I don't think we have any other last minute questions, but I'll give just another minute here if somebody does have one before we head out. Again, uh, if you're new here, this is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. I don't stream here all the time. There's a bunch of different people that stream on this channel for Pixelogic, the creators of ZBrush, which is the software that I'm using. If you guys want to find out more about the software, you can go to pixelogic.com. And if you guys want to see some more cool stuff here on the channel, just stick around and maybe click that follow button as uh, I believe Jose is going to be streaming after me in, I think, just another hour, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, I am Folygon. You can just Google Folygon. You'll find all of my stuff. I have um, the link or URL up in the top right corner of the screen, youtube.com slash Folygon. That's my YouTube channel. That's where I post most of my stuff, as well as um, my Gumroad, my Gumroad. Gumroad.com slash Folygon, wherever that is. Here it is. I'll share a link for that in chat, since I just shared that link to my YouTube channel. Uh, on there, I have a bunch of courses and tutorials, which are up here at the top of the screen that you guys can check out if interested in that, as well as some brushes, materials, base meshes, my custom UI, my brushes that I was just talking about, uh, a bunch of other stuff on here as well. I'd appreciate it if you guys checked it out. I also appreciate everybody that shares my content. Uh, it means a lot. I don't pay anything to advertise, so whenever you guys share share my stuff, uh, it warms warms my soul. So thank you, everybody that does that. Uh, let's see, anything else? I don't think so. Awesome. Well, you guys have a fantastic night. Stick around for Jose. Like I said, he's streaming in, a, in another hour or so. And I will see you guys either on my Twitch channel, which this Friday at noon EST, I do live critiques. I, I feel like I haven't mentioned that here in a while, so I'll do so again. Uh, I stream every Friday on my Twitch channel, uh, which you can find by just Googling Folygon Twitch. Uh, every every Friday, noon Eastern time. And if you want to get something critiqued live on uh, in one of those sessions, all you have to do is send an email to folygon at gmail.com, include a Z tool file, so tool save as, no ZPRs, no ZPRs, Z tools only. And OBJs are probably fine as well if you can't do a Z tool. Uh, and yeah, I'll take a look. Just include some info about it, what you want me to look at, etc., etc. And every Tuesday here on the Pixlogic channel at 6 Eastern as well. All right. Like I said, you guys have a fantastic night. You can get this material over on my Gumroad. I just shared the link. Just Google Gumroad Polygon. You'll find it. Cool, cool, cool. I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.